episode 126 of the All the Books show, recorded at the David A. Howe Public Library, where we talk book news, author news, and literary news. And I'm Eric Mickles. And I am Nick Gunning. Yeah. I startled you there for a second. I yeah, saw you out of the corner of my eye jump when I yeah, you greeted dove, our you listeners. Yeah, you dove right into it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Keeps me on my toes. Yeah. Nick, where can everybody listen to us? Well, Eric, I'm so glad you asked. Of course, you can find us at soundcloud.com slash all the books. Yeah. You can listen to us Wednesday nights at nine o'clock on the Angelica radio station. Yep. Or you can also use their Listen Live app on their Ooh. website. Uh, you can find us anywhere you find your podcast, really. Yeah. I use Podcast Addict, uh-huh. iTunes, yeah. anywhere you like. Okay. <laughs> nice. You're welcome. And Twitter. Yeah. Twitter at All the Book Show. Yeah. Facebook at David A. Howe Public Library. Email at wellsville at stls.org. Yeah. Now that we did that really boring long thing, and it's just uh-huh. the two of us listening uh-huh. right now. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Well, I want to know. It can be anything private because, again, everyone else right. has clicked away. Um, you said SoundCloud.com. Is that www.soundcloud.com? It's, it's HTTP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for checking. Yeah. I Thank you for checking. Yeah. That's really. www. Yeah. Dot. <laughs> yeah. When did that fall out of fashion? WWW? Yeah. I mean. Right away? No, I think it hung on for a, quite a while. Yeah. HTTPS was gone a long time ago. Yeah. But, when did people realize, like, oh, everything's the World Wide yeah, Web? Yeah, I don't know. Was there a competitor that I like? Such a cutesy name. WWW World World Wide Web. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. It doesn't sound as uh, volatile and toxic as the internet is. <laughs> That's true. Like, it's oh, much cuter. I'll just go share my it's opinion a on the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we sound like uh brian gumbel and katie kirk from that hilarious if you haven't if you've never heard that you should uh-huh. drop what you're doing and google that them trying to figure oh, out what the internet right. is what, yes i've seen that video yeah <laughs> it's hilarious yeah what is oh the internet? boy what is internet not the internet <laughs> what <Yeah>. is internet <laughs> yeah how are you man i'm fine I know uh, what the internet is. <laughs> i tell you what brian gumbel also makes me think of the movie that i watched over the weekend i love trouble Starring <laughs> okay. Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts. Weird. Um, yeah. Well, there was a clip of them watching the Today Show with Brian Gumble. We were like, <gasps> Brian Gumble. Yeah. So, boy, he's got more airplay in these last few minutes yeah. than he has. Last he's whoever that lady was from Ten Sisters. Ten years. Yeah, Swoozy couple... Kurtz. He, he's our Susie Kurtz. You know Kurtz what? Of I watched an episode of Man with a Plan starring Matt LeBlanc. Swoozy Kurtz was in it. There thought you of go. you. Thought of the show. Thought of Sisters. Anyways, <laughs> I Love Trouble, one of uh-huh. my favorite movies from yeah. when I was like 13. Yeah. Rewatched it again, and I'm happy to report that it held up. Okay. Google that movie, and you'll learn just how much Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts hated each other. Yeah. And still do. By, that makes uh, sense. By all accounts. Nick so, Nolte seems crazy. Yeah, that's true. So I watched a really good movie, though, called Nowhere Boy. About, it's a John Lennon biopic that just sort of goes from childhood up to right before the Beatles, like uh-huh. when they go to Hamburg, basically. Cool. Very good. Okay. Very well done movie. All right. Did you see anything good over the weekend? Uh, I watched... Logan Lucky. Oh, how was that? On DVD. It was Dan- pretty good. Daniel Craig and others. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was a good time. I've been wanting to watch that. It's a heist movie. Yeah. We have it in our collection here. Yeah. Well, What, yes. what are you waiting for, people? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Anything what are you else? Waiting for? Uh, that I watched. I watched an anime film called Redline. Yeah. It's bananas. Oh. It's, okay. It was crazy. I liked it, uh-huh. but it's just nuts. It's okay. supposed to be a racing film, and it is. But it's just like, what if Wacky Racers was on LSD? Ooh. So, and in space. I think there actually is a comic book like that now with a new, like, adult. Oh, that's right. The, the, yeah. With Scooby the Doo Scooby Doo Apocalypse yes. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read any of that? Like uh, the Flintstones thing? I read Flintstones and I read Future Quest. And they, the, they were bananas, to use your term. What's the Flintstones thing? Flintstones was just like a sort of a, a darkly comic take on the Flintstones. Huh. Like enslaving dinosaurs and things. What? Didn't, yeah. It was unpleasant. And I don't, Johnny Quest I don't know. was... Just... Johnny Quest was... That was like everyone together. Right. And it was like a little too much. Oh, wasn't he was with too Birdman? Much going on. Birdman was there at Space nice. Ghost. And yeah. yeah. Yep. Weird. Yeah, I know. Is he an adult now, Johnny Quest? No, still kid. Really? Yep. Okay. And Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. It's just like a post-apocalyptic world where Scooby and the gang are like fighting mutants and zombies and stuff. Is that fun, though? I haven't read it. I, that one's probably a little bit more fun. Probably. Because, I mean... Where do you put it, though? That's the thing. Like, are these adult graphic novels? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, are teens like, whoa, (laughs) Scooby-Doo. Zoinks. But I do (laughs) want to watch that Scooby-Doo Batman movie that's coming out. Scooby-Doo Batman. Are you going to order that? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. You better. I will. You better. Gosh. I'm going to. All right. Let's get into our bookmarks. You shouldn't clap in front of the mic. I clapped. You just... Beyond the mic. They didn't even hear it. Beyond the mic. (laughs) That's our... That's going to be a new segment. Nick yeah. and Eric, Beyond, beyond the, mic. the Mic. I love it. So. You just follow us around our everyday lives. Yeah. I'm popping an ego in yeah. the toaster. You're just along for the ride. Yeah. Because it's 
beyond yeah. the mic. I yeah. love it. That's great. You could just commentate as you because it's an audio medium. Yeah. So you have to commentate on everything. So you're yeah. Like, right, putting it in the toaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like it a little golden. I see some some not, light not light browning. I'm gonna put this is gonna be oh, a, a classic. Fridge only has one point five toaster situation and, uh, here. The mission. Pop no, it up. Gonna, pop it back down. Put margarine in it. Go the way. Gonna, second time. It's gonna be burnt. It's more for the texture. Crucial moment. Yeah, I like it. I think it's really good. What about books? Have you read any good books? Uh, are we on bookmark now? Yeah. Is that why hey, you're asking me about books? Speaking of Ego Waffles, I finally watched the first season of Stranger Things, which, guess what? Uh-huh. We also have in our collection. Oh, speaking of, that's so very good. Very like good. Me, don't have Netflix, yeah. uh, you can check out the DVDs. And there's also Blu-rays in there, too. Yeah. So you high-def aficionados. Yeah. And we have it on Laserdisc. No, we don't. No. <laughs> I think they put it out on Laserdisc, though. That's cool. Maybe? I like when they do well, that. Well, they put the soundtrack on vinyl. Yeah, they put... Well, that's not that uncommon anymore. Yeah. But they put the Guardians 2 soundtrack. They released a cassette. Yes, I remember that. actual cassette. Yeah. That's fine, I guess. I think so. Cassettes are a medium I'm okay leaving behind. Yeah, that's fine. Cassettes an 8-track. Yeah. Who needs them? Uh, CDs, for some reason, I've chosen yeah. just to... CDs stay in your heart. But I guess it's just because that's what I can listen to in my car. True. Because I don't have an aux port. You're right. Or a record player. Yeah. Do pe- can people do that? I have to imagine there's at least... Probably somebody tried it. So, yeah. Any Anytime you go over a pothole, you're on the next song. <laughs> Son of a gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I just tried to do a Beatles song going into another Beatles song, but uh-huh. I realized that you I don't, couldn't spontaneously you don't go to from two Beatles, Beatles songs, songs to probably. Apple. Yeah. Hey, I know two Beatles songs. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get to this thing. I'm trying. Bookmark. Yeah. All right. What did I read? I finished Blood of Elves. Oh. This is technically book three of the witcher series book one of the witcher is on its way even now to our collection nice so read that one that was really good Mm -hmm. still my favorite okay yeah uh getting some diminishing returns here with the witcher series well because the first two are short story sections even though the second one is like we're short stories but they're all gonna kind of have a same theme about him and yennefer and whatnot sure uh, but book one is now telling like a story, mm-hmm. except it's still almost like the short story format where like there are time jumps. And so there are section, there's a section and then time jump to another section. So okay. it's not even like a straight novel and it's not necessarily, I miss just like the, I miss him going out and witching, if yeah. you will. Yep. Uh, I don't think that's what he calls it. I just miss the like the different stories, the different adventures and stuff. Sounds so fun. like the one adventure, and now he's protecting his, uh, you know, he's training and protecting Siri, mm-hmm. his daughter, not the phone app. Yeah, the phone app. Yep. So. Yep. She has to fight Alexa. Yeah. The evil Amazon. Yeah. Witch. Yeah. <laughs> that, that works. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, what else did I read? I finished a volume of Cable and Deadpool. This mm. is from 2006. You and that Marvel Now app. Yeah. It's actually Marvel Unlimited. I just have to tell you oh, that. Oh, that's in case, right. Yes. Yeah. Because Mar- Marvel now is the imprint. Yeah. So they were doing it for a while. Yeah. Marvel Unlimited. And I finished uh, okay. Paul Jenkins' Incredible Hulk run. Past Marvel Perfect. Unchained. So now I've read all of Peter David's run mm. and then everything after that okay. until like then I'm just like, wow, two series behind now. Mm. But they're like short series. So they're re-releasing Peter David's Aquaman because the movie's coming out. Yeah. Now he's the slow and stumbly monarch of the sea. Yeah. Yep, he's not. He's neither swift nor powerful. <laughs> okay. yep, you got it. You got uh, it in one. Peter David's Aquaman, terrible. Yeah, I like Peter David. I okay. like Aquaman. Yeah, put them together, terrible. Good, yeah. Uh, Cable and Deadpool is interesting mm-hmm. because at this was a point where Deadpool wasn't the most popular thing in the world. Okay, um, Simpl- a simpler time. He was still popular enough that people wanted him in the comics, but they're like, oh, well, we have Cable and Deadpool. Let's yeah. put him in there. And now, way more people would want to be reading it for Deadpool, but cable's the main focus i see um so it's not like a slapstick comedy it's but it's good i like it it's a fun series that can be a hard adjustment to make do you have you read any elmore leonard like get shorty or no uh, any of those he wrote the 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 what was that fx series justified did you ever watch that no really that's all really good show drama but that's based on an elmore leonard series right in which the main character from that raylan givens is a minor supporting character and so, like, I watched the show and then went back to read, read the books, and mm-hmm. I couldn't get into them because I just kept being like, okay, give me Raylan, <laughs> give me Raylan, and he's a supporting character. So that can be a difficult adjustment to make. Yeah. But it sounds like you did it. I did it. All right. Good for you. Uh, I just finished uh, Black Panther, uh, Christopher Priest, Volume 2. So that's a... Mm-hmm. Uh, I got the song from the animated series yeah. stuck in my head. So that's like another 12 issues. Nice. Or so. Probably more. You've read the Ta-Nehisi Coates? No. Black- okay. No, this is from, like, I think this was being printed in... 
2001 ish 2000 okay it's like at the turn and then i've been reading a whole bunch of punisher yes i know so sorry man i know i thought I, we were gonna have like an intervention i just, read about well there's too a, much punisher there's a garth ennis garth ennis wrote punisher max okay and that was like a very adults only oh, rated sure. r punisher series but yeah. that's not on punisher that's not on the marvel unlimited app because mm-hmm. they want an e rating mm-hmm. so he did another one at around uh, 2001 2003 that was uh marvel knights so it was a little okay it's okay to have our marvel unlimited i guess okay and that was like 35 issues so i just read them all wow sunday so good good yeah for you and then i started the other one the war journal series that came after that came as part of the civil war marvel civil war arc. blink once if this is a cry for help no man i like the punisher wow yeah I've, I've read lots of punisher before i'm not blinking you you haven't blinked at all <laughs> <laughs> you're a robot <laughs> All my right. eyes are so dry. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about the Punisher because he, he really doesn't stand do for I. anything that I stand for. True. And I don't, but I don't stand for a lot. Hmm. So I'll fall right over. Will you? Any argument? Yeah. Really? So, but I just I like him. I like where he. I like his place in the Marvel universe. Okay. It's different. Big Travolta fan? Are you? No, it has nothing to do with Travolta. Okay. Uh, but the movie, I did like the movie. The Thomas Jane John Travolta yeah. movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was pretty good. Yeah, decent. So, and then I'm reading. I have to read. Code Talker, which is a uh, young adult book for a book club. Okay. It's about, uh, I think I brought it up, Navajo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, young Navajo mm-hmm. uh, joins the military. Sounds and then, interesting. And then, what else? I have another book. Oh, I, ha- I picked up Turtles All the Way Down and The Hate You Give. Ooh. But I do want to read The Hate You Give. I've been reading so many comics. You might get into Turtles All the Way Down a little bit more. You kind of like that. Maybe I'll get like super into it. Yeah. I just figured, I've read Fault in Our Stars. But I should probably read like his new one. Yeah. So and I should read the hate you give. Mm-hmm. So this is this is for the job. Oh, that's, okay. That's three books for the job. Yeah. Punching the clock on those ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, I'm gonna need uh, I'm gonna need some reimbursement. I was for sitting on my couch reading those mm, books. Okay. If that's All right. Possible. Yeah. I'll just make a note. I will make a note of that. <laughs> All right. Do you uh, need my pencil? No. You no. Just, I, no. It's a lockbox. To make right that up note, here. No, just I got it all. They're all memorized. Okay. So. Uh, I finished some stuff. Yeah. I finished a couple graphic novels that I won't go into. What? Uh, Rage Planet, which is the new Green Lanterns yeah. series. Not very good. Uh, Blood it's and Sorrow. Rage Planet. I know. The concept's cool. It's like two yeah. novice Green Lanterns team up, but they're just both kind of dull characters. So. Oh, that's not Didn't good. really fly. Uh, Wolverine, Blood and Sorrow. Pretty good. Just a collection of standalone Wolverine stories. I like that. Uh, then I read Kenobi. Mm-hmm. which we disagree on. It's a Star Wars book, yeah. And I'm actually a little... Because I read it based on your recommendation, and uh-huh. I'm like, convinced that we somehow read different books. Yeah, I guess you're just dumb. Well, you said you skimmed the parts that Obi-Wan Kenobi wasn't in. That might have been true. So that would be a very different <laughs> reading, because yeah. like by all accounts, he is not the main character. He's yeah. like a but minor supporting character. No, he's got all those... Uh, it's about a lady... Meditation scenes. Raising her kids. He f- Trying to run a store. No, somebody's like all flirty with him. He's like, no, I can't. That's the lady. Yeah. Yeah. So sad. He's so lonely. Yeah. Get that stuff your, that it's stuff. just it's just not it's just not what yeah. you'd expect. You know, like I, I I get that he can't have some big grand adventure because mm-hmm. he's like in hiding. But at the same time, like you don't ever yeah. see him like watching over Luke or trying to like keep that family safe or anything. He's yeah. just like chilling with this single mom and her kids, like yeah. trying to help her run a store. Oh, He's he's new okay. at the whole exile. Hey, that's that's, that's hard, the man. Kind of... He has to go from uh, Jedi to Zero real fast. I think if you were to pick this book up now, no, I'd love it now. I don't think so. I would too. I don't think I so. I would too. All right, you're okay. stupid. Okay. Uh, and hey, then I... I just got the the word from uh, the higher up. You're fired from the podcast. I'll have to check with my manager. <sighs> Wait, that's me. Yeah, and it's in your best interest to keep me on. Why? Because I'm your manager. <gasps> uh, yes, sir. I read The Long Fall by Walter Mosley. Uh huh. Oh, yes. This is our Page Turners book club. Boy, my wife hated it. Well, she's not wrong. With, <laughs> I read her review. I think that for me, I kind of I liked his style a lot okay. more. Uh, and that sort of got me through. And I was listening to it on audiobooks. I was uh-huh. sort of doing other things. But she's right. The story felt a little nonsensical. Mm. It's, uh, it just you're sort of popping from person to person. And as he's trying to sort of figure out uh, what's going on in the situation where he's hired to look for someone. And then all of a sudden the people involved in this case just start like dying. So he's trying to like, he's hired for a job, 
does it and then has to kind of work backwards to figure out what's going on. But that just makes a really confusing narrative. It's just, it's not well done. Mm-hmm. The character is interesting. The writing is good. Um, Walter Mosley is probably best known for his Ely Ra- Easy Rollins series, which has got a lot of good marks. So that's probably where we should have gone. But there weren't enough copies of that first book to use as a book club. So there you go. I went with uh, Leonid McGill as the main character here. Okay. I won't follow this series. All right. It was a fine read. Yeah. I could see potential, like as far as uh, Mosley's writing, I think was strong. Just this book mm-hmm. is not very cohesive and didn't really work. So, all right. We'll see. I don't think the book club's going to like it at all. Yeah. So, we'll see. Gone. We will see. I'm currently reading uh, Binary by uh-huh. Michael Crichton, writing as John Lang. Oh, okay. One of the very early Crichtons. It's yes. like a sort of a, I guess, a political thriller. Ooh, exciting. It's pretty good so far. Yeah. I like it. It's short. Yeah. So I'll let you know what I think. <laughs> okay. And then I started the subtle art of not giving a, what's our rating? Uh, you can say F. F. Yeah. Subtle art of not giving an F. Yeah. By Mark Manson. Yeah. Which is one of the more popular. Best selling books of 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm checking that out. I like it so far. Yeah. I'm not too deep into it. I'd call you a sheep. But it's fun. You don't, you don't care. Yeah. You don't give an F. Yeah. It's a <laughs> subtle art that I'm practicing. Yeah. How many times do you think we can just say E-E-F until people are of set hmm i don't know probably not probably not too many times okay so sooner or later you're actually just gonna say the f word (gasps) that'd be funny that's what happens that'd be great did you watch saturday night live this no we got to i know i i saw that sam rockwell score it was so funny too because it was not a subtle like he just like flat out said it yeah so but what's gonna happen to sam rockwell nothing yeah guests can swear yeah people think they can't but they can yeah so i guess I think they're fined. I think usually it's a, the FCC like finds them. Yeah. It must be hard being so. fined for saying the F word once when you're a millionaire. Wow. I've got, <laughs> got a lot of built up yeah, resentment. I've got no sympathy for, uh, for celebrities' money woes. Okay. So remember when uh, Nicolas Cage was like broke and he had to sell a Superman comic for a million dollars? No, I don't. No. Oh. But I believe you. Yeah. He had to sell Action Comics number one hmm. for like a million dollars. That's sad, I guess. Yeah, I, no, it's not sad. Well, I mean... <laughs> He had Action Comics number one. Now he doesn't. Yes. Yeah. That in a vacuum is sad, yeah. but probably not. Yeah, now he Nick has a Cage million dollars. Made a million dollars. Poor guy. Is not really a Listen, sad story. If I had Action Comics so. number one and you were on your deathbed and you're like, all I want to do is hold it, and somebody's like, I'll give you a million dollars for it right now, you'd, be, you'd have a very nice coffin. Huh. I guess that's a fair trade off. At least a $20,000 coffin. Really? 10. 10. 15? Done. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want one with surround sound. Surround sound? Yeah. In the ground? Yeah. That's that's ground sound. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. It's the stupidest thing that's ever been said. You'd attract a lot of snakes. Do they so, like sounds? Aren't they attracted to vibrations in the I don't ground? Know what, I don't know what they're attracted to. I'm there was a Simpsons snakes. episode uh, where the town always clubs snakes, hmm. and the kids are upset about it, so they get Barry White, and they drop the speakers down on the ground, and he just sings a song, hmm. and all the snakes head toward the... Well, a, if, it happened, if it happened on The Simpsons, it must be. <laughs> it's just great because it's just very white. Just like, oh, yeah. All right. Oh, and the snakes are like, hmm. Well, now I know how to get rid of snakes. Play Barry White yeah. really loud. Yeah. Classic, Absolutely. Classic episode. Absolutely. Well, that's it for me. I've got a stack. i got a stack of books I want to read. I want to read yeah. that new Batman YA book. Oh, Night Walker? Yeah. i got to yeah. read um, <laughs> The Doomsday Key yeah. by James Rollins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I don't know. You I know, just keep like stacking the yeah, list higher and higher news, books man. I want to get to. Yeah, you're gonna I want to try to hit stack. some of the, uh, now that now that they're not new books, I want to try mm-hmm. to hit some of the bigger 2017 books gonna, that I missed. You're going to be on the uh, old recovery I know. soon from surgery. I know. Nick's getting surgery because his stomach doesn't work like stomachs work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so maybe I will catch up on some yeah. reading then. Yeah. It's very easy to stay awake and focus on boring books when you're <laughs> recovering from stomach surgery. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. So, uh all right well do you want to talk about what's new in the world of publishing sure well yeah i mean we got to technically you know what i appreciate i appreciate the way that you really (laughs) considered that sorry because i didn't just want some blow off answer yeah and you didn't give me that so all right uh this is gonna perk you right up. oh i was gonna make fun of nightwalker go ahead just because it's called nightwalker yeah like that's nothing it's not great I used to spend a lot of time walking at night. Nobody's like, there goes a night walker. You don't know what they said. Yeah, I wasn't like, there's just Blade, 
I the Marvel superhero I character is called Daywalker. You're upset that nobody thought that you were like a cool night walker. Nobody called. Yeah, it's bitterness. Yeah, I could. I was it. night I walking way it. before Batman made it cool. I guess we'll never know yeah. because no one called you a night walker, but yeah. everybody calls Batman a night walker. Yeah, welcome so. night walker. Nope, it never happened. <laughs> Maybe it did. Listen. Maybe I walked into a 24/7. I I know the place and like greetings, night walker. What news do you bring from the outside? I know that you're upset about this, and so I'm going to cheer you up because guess who's written a new book. Your author crush, Heather Graham. Heather Graham <laughs> is back. <laughs> Can't with talk her about yeah. New York Confidential series, book number three. Yeah. Never uh, read a Heather Graham book in my life. A dangerous game, and I don't want you to get confused because it's not the most dangerous game. Right, starring scale, Heather Graham <laughs> on a scale of dangerous games. <laughs> yes, this is not the most. Right, but no it's, evidence tells me that it's also the least it's dangerous game. A, it's dangerous a dangerous game. game. It's a dangerous game. It's, it feels weird to say a dangerous game instead of an dangerous game. Nope, and dangerous game sounds worse. Yeah, it does. A dangerous game. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not grammatically. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, a, the third novel in the New York Confidential series by long-established New York Times best-selling romantic suspense author Heather Graham. Heather Graham. This is the author's romantic suspense star of stream. Austin Powers. The spy. In addition who to her me. successful ongoing mass market paperback paranormal romantic suspense series, that's a lot of adjectives. Yeah. Heather Graham sort of is all over the place. The author. Yeah. Doesn't she write sci-fi too sometimes? Well, like, yeah, more like fantasy. Right. Paranormal romance, as I just read. Yeah. Would you like to know a little more about this? Sure. Psychologist Kieran Finnegan is thrust into the middle of an investigation. Nobody's going to see Dr. (laughs) Finnegan about anything. Human trafficking when a desperate woman shoves an infant into her arms and then flees, only to be murdered minutes later on a busy Manhattan street. The year? 1922. That baby? Hitler. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that would that would change what the book was about. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, that's coming out in March. Yeah. I should say that. That is a mid-March yeah. book. Finnegan? She's from the future. Uh-oh. She knows. What's she going to do? Time to begin again, Finnegan. Yeah. Did I already tell you about that episode of The Twilight Zone from like the remake one from like their 2000s? I assume that you have, but I'm willing to listen Woman again. Woman Goes Back in Times. I think it's uh, Catherine Heigl. Okay. Uh, finds out that a baby is baby Hitler, doesn't know yeah. what to do. So she takes the baby and jumps into uh, the river with the baby, killing yeah. them both. Yeah. But then the nursemaid looks down in the sewer, sewer and sees like a homeless lady and pays her for the baby. Huh. And that baby was Hitler. No. Yes. Wow. Twilight wow. Zone. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, Linda Howard. Uh-huh. Back with The Woman Left Behind, Levi Butcher is a singularly devoted to his work. As right. team leader for the GO team, his unwavering sure. focus is on the mission. <laughs> Levi knows all too well that one minor distraction can hold deadly consequences. Yeah. But with the soothing, sensual voice of Babe, the team's communication expert, constantly <laughs> in his ear, uh-huh. keeping his concentration on the dangerous work at hand is becoming extremely difficult. Yeah. I don't know what this book's about. So what's his job? I'm, I'm not sure. The go team? The go team. I'll keep going. Gina Modell definitely doesn't feel like a <laughs> babe, especially when she's working with the gruff, no-nonsense Levi. When the base where she's stationed is attacked, Gina manages to escape, but the rest of the team, working some distance away, is exfiltrated. Okay. Thinking this is Gina military. died in the explosion, leaving her stranded. To survive, she's got to figure out how to get back to safety before she's mm-hmm. discovered by the enemy. Yeah. Levi would never willingly leave a soldier behind, especially yeah. a brave woman whose sweet voice haunts his every thought. <laughs> Once he discovers Gina is alive, the tenacious yeah. warrior will walk into a fire to save this intriguing woman right. who has captured his heart. This sounds like a Man, horrible book. The audiobook, it <laughs> really sounds needs, like a horrible It's going to really need to do a strong, strong work on her voice. He's got to go rescue if, this damsel and her If they give her like a, voice, harsh, a harsh New Jersey actress, accent, that's going to be, you know. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm going to call this book a step back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see <laughs> if I can find us a good book. Uh, J.A. Jantz, yeah. who is not a Muppet. She just sounds like Julie Sweeney hmm. in yeah. the audio book. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, Allie Reynolds, book number 13. Not a lot of information Wait, about this one. Who played so. the nanny? Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher is, is Gina. Babe. Yeah, Babe. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the 13th book in New York Times bestselling author J.A. Jantz's popular series featuring Allie Reynolds, a former L.A. Uh, Los Angeles news anchor turned amateur sleuth. Ooh. Does that sound fun? You yeah. Like, you don't like amateur sleuths. Well, tales. hold on. Okay. I just, I'm still watching uh, Sherlock. Not Sherlock. Elementary. Elementary. My dear Eric. And um, Joan Watson, Lucy okay. Liu, has now gone from sober companion to 
uh, apprentice of oh. Sherlock. So in a way, she's an amateur sleuth. Interesting. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Seems like you are. I kind of. There miss- are books based on that. You want yeah. me to get them for you? What? Elementary? Yeah. Will you read it? Or is this just the Arthur Conan Doyle? No, Sherlock it's real. Oh, really? really? There's books in the, based on the elementary really? show. Yes. That's weird. I guess. No, thanks. Well, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Buy it now is instant, Eric. No, thank you. Well. Thank you, no. Uh, the first one is called The Ghost Line, written by Mr. Adam Christopher. All right. I'm okay, though. Do you want me to read you the no, synopsis? It's more, it's more for the Someone's performances that bullet, I watched the show than the... Body in Hell's no. Kitchen's apartment. Oh, okay. geez. Hell's Kitchen? Is this a Daredevil book? <gasps> I don't know. I would totally watch an elementary Daredevil crossover. It's called The Ghost Line. Yeah. Oh, he'd figure out that he's Matt Murdock right away. He would know. He, he would just know. Like, he would the way know you didn't... Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you one more. This is a large print book. Okay. Once an Heiress right. by Renee Ryan. Twice a Baroness. Mm-hmm. Boston society darling Gigi Wentworth leaves behind everything she holds dear I've for the sake of behind. love, only to learn that the man with whom she's planned to elope is nothing but a thieving scoundrel. Yeah, nothing but a scoundrel. Abandoned in New... Is that your best Boston accent? Sorry. It's all right. That's just you're from the area. I'd... Abandoned in New York City and saddled with debt, Gigi must sell a prized family heirloom. Yeah. But even that sacrifice isn't enough to get her home. Her determination drives her to take on work as a lady's maid, keeping her identity a secret until she's discovered by a former friend with a hidden agenda. I've been discovered. Are you in? This is a large print book. Uh, no, I'm not in. Okay. I think my Boston accent was suffering because I can't yell. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. You got to be you got to be shouting across the street. Okay. <laughs> that would help. Far that and out. Far and out, buddy. Let me <laughs> Let me ask you a real question. Uh-huh. Can you read a large print book or does it drive you crazy? I can read a large print book. Yeah. Why would it drive me crazy? I don't know. Because of the large print? I guess. Some uh, people are just like, no, Or maybe I, I it's just saying the it. same thing over and over again. Maybe. Like, but I've read this page. I've read this page. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I just sort of like acclimate to it pretty quickly. But some mm-hmm. people just refuse. Mm-hmm. They don't like it. So that's all. Just, I was just curious. Yeah. What's on the New York Times bestseller list? Let's check it out. Let's do it. Together, as a team. Hey. As a podcast team. As a podcast team. Huh. As a podcast team. Wait, where are you going with that? Nowhere. Okay. That's good. Uh, all right. So the New York Times bestsellers list for hardcover nonfiction. Okay. What do we got? Probably Fire and Fury. I don't know. Which I guess is a book. I don't know. Okay. Number 10, Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance uh, is no longer a hillbilly. He's mm-hmm. bought the biggest house in all of the country <laughs> with these book sales. You're right about that. So, Number nine, Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grant. Mm. You know, I'm sorry because the Beverly Hillbillies still had a very nice house and were very rich, but that didn't stop That's them true. from remembering that they were hillbillies. You know what? It's mindset. Yeah. It's mindset. They're still Jenny from the block. Yeah. But in this case, the hillbillies from the wherever Ozarks, they came. The Ozarks, I guess. I don't no, know. Noah's Ark? The Ozarks. Oh. <laughs> So you got two lions, two elephants, yeah. and then a family of hillbillies. Yeah, and Granny making her moonshine. <laughs> okay. Uh, number four, The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish. Mm. You like Tiffany Haddish. Do I? She was on SNL. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was very funny. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, and I heard out of the two girl nights that go crazy, mm-hmm. uh, her movie was funnier than Scarlett Johansson's movie. That movie did not look good to me. Rough so. Night? Yeah. Or the Scarlett Johansson girls one trip. looked awful. Yeah. Uh, seven, Andrew Jackson in the Miracle of New Orleans. Mm, well. Once there was only one New Orleans. Now, one. It's a miracle. <laughs> Six, Let Trump Be Trump mm. by Corey R. Lewandowski. Hard pass, at... Corey. Hard, <laughs> hard pass. Number five, Promise Me Dad by Joe Biden. Number four, Grant by Ron Chernow. Mm. So you want that book. You want me to get you that book. No, I want the other one. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci by Walter Isaacson? No. Astrophysics other... for People in a Hurry? No. I want by Neil deGrasse Tyson, no, which is I at number two. No, I want the other Grant book that came out right before this one. No, you want the good Grant book that everybody likes. You don't know? Oh, you're so contrary. You're so about contrary. About everything. You're so like contrary. If your doctor said, hey, we need to replace your stomach, you'd be like, I'm going to double up on the stomach I have. Wow. That would be so reckless. <laughs> uh, number one, Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf. There it is. Uh, it turns out that Michael Wolf, though, actually a wolf. Really? Yeah, a timber wolf of all oh, things. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. See, he was surfing on top of the car in Teen Wolf. Was that him? No, that's a Californian wolf. Oh, okay. So makes makes sense, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. All right. What about nonfiction or fiction? Yeah, oh, fiction, fiction. Y- you mean fiction? Yes, that's why I said, said it. Nonfiction. I said it thirty times. 
You sure did. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry. I, I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Well, well, it's not an exact science, man. It is. All right, here we are. <laughs> Hardcover fiction, bestsellers list. What do we got? Oh, geez. That, nope. That was a, that was a drum roll. Yeah, that was irresponsible to our listeners. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, they can't see that face you're making, man. It's not funny anymore. Well. Just say something. Uh, all right, so number 10 on the hardcover fiction, Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Okay. So this has gone up on the list because it's been here for 16 weeks. Well. But I don't ever remember mentioning it. So It's got legs. Yeah. A South Carolina lawyer learns about the questionable practices of a Tennessee orphanage. Sounds depressing. Yeah. Nick, <laughs> it is. Okay. Number nine, The Midnight Line by Lee Child. woo uh, so what happened was New York proved too hard for Jack Reacher. Oh, yeah. So he's so taking that midnight lane to join him. Leaving the life he's come to know? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. His world, my world, <laughs> his world, ours and his alone. Yeah. I got to go. Sorry, I guess that was irresponsible. To that was a little, yeah. I would like to apologize. Uh, yeah. Number eight, The People versus Alex Cross by James Patterson. Now, see, what happens is uh, Alex Cross, uh, New York proved too hard for him. Mm-hmm. It's L.A. L.A. proved too too much for. I them. thought it was New York. No, he's he's leaving from L.A. Yeah, well, that's not hard. Really? Yeah, it's a longer train ride. Oh, that's to true. get to Georgia. Ge- yeah, come on, now. you're gonna be in Georgia in like six hours if you go from uh by New train York. eight like fourteen. Jeez. Yeah. Why do we still have trains? I don't know. I guess I love trains. I guess they're really. Yeah, I, I wish that I wish that some good politician would come in and like overhaul the rail system. I'd be on trains all the time. It wouldn't really? be able to stop me. Yeah. I was on a train once, yeah, and I couldn't read because I experienced motion sickness on a train, okay. which is annoying. Well, but the woman next to me had a mini DVD player and Netflix, and I was very excited because I'm like, I get to watch a movie. Yeah, the movie she had was Stepmom, mm. Julie Roberts, and Susan Sarandon. Is Nick Nolte in that? Because Julie Roberts hates. No. Okay, it's just such a weird choice for like 2011. Yeah, it is weird. I'm gonna watch Big Ed Harris fan. I guess. I don't know what happened to that. Little Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. yeah. All right. Seven, Unbound by Stuart Woods. Mm-hmm. It's 44th book in the Stone Barrington. Keep them coming. Yeah. And they're all sexy titles? Mm, n- no. I mean, they're not sexy. Yeah. I mean, they're all risk, not risque, but they all have Entendres. sort of a, yeah. 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 Uh, do you think his next book will be called Utandra? I think it's called Sexy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how to pronounce this book. It's number six. It's Robbie O. No, R O B I, but then it's C H E A U X. Hmm. Robichaud. Robichaud. Thank it's you. It's about Dave Robichaud. That's James Lee Burke, right? Yeah. Yeah. A bereaved detective confronts his past and works to clear his name when he becomes a suspect during an investigation into the murder of the man who killed his wife. Not a fan of this series, but Alec Baldwin played Dave Robichaud in a movie. Did he? If that makes you feel what better. What movie? Heaven's. Stepmom? Yeah, it was Stepmom. <laughs> okay. Heaven's Prisoner, I think it's called. Okay. I don't know. Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. Was this on one of the lists we read about? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it won all sorts of things. It won the National Book Award. And it won. Uh, well, it's here now. A 13-year-old boy that's probably why. comes of age in Mississippi while his black mother takes him and his toddler sister to pick up their white father who's getting released from the state penitentiary. Hmm. Oh, isn't this like poems or something? No. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Little Fires Everywhere by <laughs> Celeste NG. That won the Goodreads Choice Awards for fiction. Yeah, never read it. Never even heard of it until today. Well, we... Talked about it a lot in the... Uh... What, for the past 16 weeks? Yeah. Well, never heard of it. Okay. Number three, The Rooster Bar by John Grisham. Mm. So, are you yeah. going to read this? Based on the par- uh, Clint McGavin's paralegal rooster. Yeah. Set up as it once Clint McGavin was trapped in the past. Yes. Rooster was like, With well, I got nothing better to do than start my own... Practice. Saloon. Yep. The Rooster Bar. Yeah. So. I'd read it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just because it's got... A, hey, Rooster, whatever got... happened to your old partner, Clint? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, partner. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Uh, Origin is at number two by Dan Brown. Still. Still. Wow. Wow. Okay. 14 weeks. It hasn't gone to the bottom three in these 14 weeks, I I guess not. I guess not. It's crazy to me that people still kill. Still still care. No, Ron Howard's busy making a Star Wars movie nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to see that Star Wars movie. So, uh, The Woman in the Window is at number one by A.J. Finn. Hmm. 
a recluse who drinks heavily oh. and takes prescription drugs oh boy. may have witnessed a crime oh my gosh. across from her Harlem townhouse. I saw a crime Ugh. across from my Harlem townhouse. I'm not crazy. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'll go it alone. That's fine. Hold on. I know what I saw. Hold on. No, that's fine. Wait, you were, you, were you drinking heavily that morning? Uh, I, well, I drink regularly. I don't know. <laughs> heavily. <laughs> doesn't what, matter. I know what I saw. What about that morning? There was a body. I know I saw it in my Harlem neighborhood. Hold on. I just have one more question. Okay. You're not on any prescription drugs, are you? I know what I saw, everybody. <laughs> I just got off a cruise. It was very upsetting. This isn't even the same author. It's just. It's not? How many How many women under the influence, these unreliable women, are seeing murders all the time? It's happening a lot. You know, it's I'm, I'm going to say it. We live in a world. Yeah. Where just being a non under, just not being under the influence and being a woman means people won't believe you most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, like, why do they have to throw so much drink, all this other stuff? I feel like it's more just like a publishing trend. People keep like, just chasing that. Yeah. And it seems to be yeah. working because Women and Kevin 10 went right to the top. Yeah. Girl on a Train, of course. Yeah. You know, Gone Girl. I think Gone Girl really was the one that like started it. Yeah, but she wasn't, she didn't witness a murder. Nobody believed Ben Affleck. That's true. Because he was just kind of a jerk. Yeah. Without being, he was. It was a weird right. take. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the woman in the window. All right. So you saw this from out, right outside. You saw the crime right there. Hmm. No. Nope. It sounds kind of interesting. It's the same. You've you've read it I before. Know. I know, but maybe this maybe the writing's better. Ooh, you have a phone call. You hmm. want to take it? No, that's okay. All right. So we'll just sit here and listen to your. Just ringtone. keep going. Hold on. Let me check. Uh, yeah, one four. Okay, yeah, it is amateur hour. So that's good to know. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to check my watch real quick to make sure. I thought it was a little bit early for amateur hour, but <laughs> so so your your way to vamp is to just make fun of a okay. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that that's a good well, way to do it. Well, you had already done. All right, let's get to our option. segment. Let's do it. Well, well we've we been talking. We've been talking about yeah, last good. year uh, uh -huh. in books, and now we're looking ahead. We're looking to the future. Yeah, 2017, dead. You know what? Dead in the water. The future Woman in the now. window saw 2017 mm -hmm. get murdered. Mm -hmm. I don't believe her. Hey, you know what? Uh -huh. Our old pal, uh, Katura, uh -huh. rated this very highly and what? highly recommends it. This book that we're talking about. Woman in the window? Yes, she did. Huh. Yep. Wait, but Katura used to say that she saw She a saw murder. a murder? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, We didn't believe her because she, she was the children's librarian. Right, yeah. Like what would a children's library know about, yeah, a about a murder? No way. <laughs> anyway, we're looking ahead, folks. Yeah. We're looking ahead and we're looking to the silver screen. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some books that are becoming movies in 2018. Yeah. It's the most exciting part of reading books. Is it? Waiting for the movie. Oh. No, I'm are there Are there any that funny. you were like waiting for? I guess we'll find out. Ready Player One. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Yeah. Yeah, we will. I don't think there's any that I was particularly... Well, let's see. Okay. Should we start from the list? Let's We're using popsugar.com's list. Thanks, PopSugar. PopSugar, for all your sugar needs. Is that true? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, so number. So the first book we got here, coming out January 19th. Wait, why Why that's this week? <gasps> uh, it's called Forever My Girl. By Paula Abdul? No. Oh. Why would that be by... Uh, Forever Your Girl. Sorry, no, my yeah. mistake. My this is mistake. Forever My Girl uh, by Heidi McLaughlin. So a country singer returns home to the girl he left behind and oh. finds that he left behind a lot more than he knew. Wait, was she like pregnant? It's interesting. Was she the inspiration for all his songs? Could be. Uh, Could be. This it, is a series now. It's this... not star starring anyone I know. Okay. This is a long-running series, actually. Oh, really? Forever yeah. My Girl, Forever Steal My Girl, Steal My Girl, <laughs> After Forever. <laughs> Uh, Forever My Girl. Uh -huh. Book two is called My Everything. Mm -hmm. oh, that's sorry, that's 1.5. Book 1.5. My Unexpected Forever. Finding My Forever. Finding My Way. 12 Days of Forever. Mm -hmm. My Kind of Forever. Mm -hmm. Forever Our Boys. So, I this is not a series that I was aware of before this. How about you? No. Had you heard of it? No. Okay. Well, our copy is on its way, folks. So, if you want to read it before the movie comes out, you're going to have to hurry because it comes out in right. three days. All right, so you have the book Horse Soldiers by Doug Stanton hmm. being turned into uh, a movie. It's been retitled 12 Strong, but then a very long title of the Horse Soldiers of the something, something, mm -hmm. something. 
Um, it's the true story of the special force missions in Afghanistan after the 9-11 attacks, starring Chris Hemsworth. Mm. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. Because sometimes you get confused about the Hemsworth. I do. There's so many. Yeah. Apparently, his wife is starring in this. Interesting. Elsa Petaski mm-hmm. and Moonlight's Trevante Rhodes. Yeah, this uh, this preview did not do much for me. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, it's a type of film. Mm-hmm. That's true. We uh, actually do have this one. We have this down in the stacks. It's a little, mm-hmm. little bit older book, but we certainly do have it. Yeah. Um, all right. So next, coming out January 26th. That's you know what? Yes. I'm going to say it. I'm experiencing book-to-screen p- fatigue. Are you? There's too many books becoming movies it's these only, days. We've only talked about two. Well, okay. a little space. It sure. used to be an event. Yeah, you're right. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm making a... Uh, an homage? Mm-hmm. No. What am I doing? A parody? Of, of me? Of the superhero fatigue Thinking. that people think they're experiencing. Okay. Anyways, The Death Cure by James Dashner. This is book three wow. of uh, the Maze Free Runner. Run series. Maze right. Runner. Maze Runner. <laughs> free Run. Uh, and this, Maze Runner. This, now, this is long delayed because the Dylan O'Brien was injured pretty seriously. Yes. In the Dylan making O'Brien, of this movie, right? Yes. Well, yeah. do, doing a stunt for this movie that involved a car was injured, and he was injured very badly. Yeah. And they had to delay it uh for quite a while right. it's been a long time in terms of when these movies come out yeah since uh the scorch trails the mm-hmm. scorch trails it's been a couple of years now that was crazy yeah. i only read the first book of the maze runner series and uh-huh. hated its guts i uh-huh. liked the movie okay the second yeah. movie was like a zombie movie yeah. which i wasn't too wild this about. new movie looks like it's trying to be the young adult version of mad max huh. so i, I, I want to see it yeah i have do you, to do you like these series uh, I like the first movie better than the second movie. I yeah. found the second movie to be overlong, and it proved a scene out of The Lost World, hmm. but oh, yeah. just replaced dinosaurs with zombies. I remember that. And this is funny, because like, that would be my reverse thing. I'd replace zombies with dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Dawn of the Dead? What if it was Dawn of the Dinosaurs? I don't <gasps> know. And we're all hiding out in a mall, but there's Velociraptors. Could all right. Be, could uh, be good. So Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. Goodness. Do you think they're going to make the gray movies? I hope not. No, I don't think they I guess will. they couldn't. We've so already seen Right. So there's movies, if you don't know, there are books based on the Fifty Shades of Grey, but from the other characters' yeah. perspective. So. All right. So in the final book, if in the, the first Fifty ones aren't Shades saga, darkly sexual enough for you, you yeah. can read them. Christian and Anna navigate their most dangerous, treacherous relationship yet, marriage. Oh. Yeah. They get made. Mm-hmm. They get married. I said they get made. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Woo. Skipping right to the honeymoon. <laughs> Jeez. Whew. Um, let's see. And now the next one I'm kind of excited about, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Hold I, on. I didn't, I was, I, I was excited about that one too, because I haven't read the book. Go on. Okay. I, I was excited about it because I read this list already and I just found out what's going on. Okay. Go on. Well, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. Uh, I haven't, this is part of a trilogy. It's like I just threw a person under your legs. It's just <laughs> confusing. The, the Southern Reach trilogy. So this uh-huh. is kind of a, what, techno thriller? It says it's a say? thriller, a bio, a bio, a bio thriller. <laughs> yes. A biologist sets out on an expedition to a mysterious area to find out what's killed her husband there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually just ordered this trilogy for the library because we didn't have it. Uh, we don't have it, Annihilation? No, we don't. I remember seeing the cover around. Yeah, it I don't know. It must be just from other libraries or something. Okay. But I ordered the whole trilogy. So if you're yes. a fan of the movie, uh, you can devour the you whole trilogy. You got Natalie Portman. How do you feel about... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish the cast. You got Natalie Portman, mm-hmm. Gina Rodriguez from Jane the Virgin, mm-hmm. and Tessa Thompson, who was Valkyrie just recently mm. in Thor. And Oscar Isaac. Apocalypse the film. from the uh, X-Men yeah. film Apocalypse. But it's being directed by Ex Machina's Alex Garland. Hmm. And Ex Machina was very good. I had, So seeing uh, Alex Garland involved in that made me interested and excited for this. Okay. So. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. When it's something like this, mm-hmm. are you more likely to just stick with one over the other? So like... If we go see this movie and you love it, are you going to read the books? Or since you started with a movie, are you just going to stay the movie straight through? Probably just the movie. Movie. It's very rare that like I watch the movie and then read the book. Oh, really? Yeah. I've done that. I think I do that quite a lot, actually. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So these are coming our way. Uh, I, uh, ordered, I ordered all three of them. Annihilation, February 23rd. Yep. Be there or be annihilated. So, I mean, assuming it goes well, mm-hmm. it'll probably be a trilogy. Yes. I bet that's what they're hoping for. Young the adult, next one is YA. Yeah. Young adult author David uh, Leviathan. Leviathan. Leviathan? Oh, there's no A, so probably not. Mm-hmm. Leviathan. Leviathan. Probably. Leviathan. Yeah. February 23rd. It's called Every Day. Uh, 16 year old. I'm familiar with his books, but actually, I don't think this one. Does. I haven't heard this of this either. Okay. Uh, 16 year old 
Rhiannon has fallen in love with a spirit that goes by the name A and which inhabits a different body every single day. I uh, like that cute little rhyme you did. It's pretty good. Did I? Yeah. Huh. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. So what's coming out uh, February 23rd? I have read this book. The War with Grandpa? The War with Grandpa. As a child, I read this book. Huh. Yeah. Star uh, By Robert Kimmel Smith. A young boy has to give up his room for his grandpa's use, so he devises a series of pranks to drive him out. Uh, Robert De Niro is playing the grandpa, Ooh. and Uma Thurman and Christopher Walken co-star. Oh I'm worried that Uma Thurman and Christopher Walken are a couple. Huh. I hope they're not like the mom and dad. That'd be weird. Yeah. Um, maybe Christopher Walken's the son? The grandson? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Grandpa. The grandpa. Get out of my room. Yeah. <laughs> it's my stuff. Oh, you just wanted to do Okay. This yeah. floor is yours. Yeah. Go ahead. What are you using it for? <laughs> I use it to sleep. Go to bed. Awful. <laughs> the worst. It's awful. That, that, oh, really? Yeah, that ego bit was better than this. You can do a better. You can do a better Christopher Walken. I'm not going to try, but definitely. Okay. No, you can't. Uh, Red Sparrow. All by right. Sure. Jason Matthews, a All great right. and dangerous. You can do a spy bad game. Flip. He just doesn't feel like doing it right now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Vince Flynn likes these books. Jason Matthews. Yes. Well, yes. This is the Jennifer Lawrence movie that everybody's like. Look, it's a Black Widow movie. Listen, I know you want a Black Widow movie. Who wants that? But it's just going to be a spy movie, unless they put Omega Red in it, which I, me and Nick talked about, and yeah. I'm excited for that. You're excited so for So now her. I want a Black Widow movie where she goes up against some Omega Red. This conversation just gave me superhero fatigue. Hmm. If I'm sitting through a Black Widow movie, something's right. gone terribly wrong. Russian prima ballerina. Stop it. <laughs> uh, Dominica? Yep. Turns spy after her ballet career ends. So J-Law is going to play a washed up ballerina who turns into a spy? Yeah. Look, okay. it's it's not well known, but this is the common result of uh, ballerinas. That if, actually Once is, their career ends, most of them have to become spies. That knowledge is weirdly yeah. common. I there's, don't know why you're saying oh. <laughs> everybody There's just not that. a lot of uh, post-ballet jobs out there for that's ballerinas true. besides spy. Yeah. So this comes out uh, March 2nd. It looks... Um, I saw a preview for it. It looks, definitely looks grown up. Jennifer Lawrence has been on kind of a, I don't know, grown up opposite of a hot streak uh, lately, hasn't like she? Seems like cold, the last s- cold slouch. S- slouch, yes. <laughs> so maybe this will be the one. Uh, has she? I seems like it. Interstellar made it, not Interstellar. Passengers made money. Oh yeah, but then everybody retroactively hated it. Yeah, well. Uh, a Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lee Engel. All right, now I have to read this book before the movie comes out. Yeah, it comes out March 9th, so you better hurry. I got plenty of time. 14-year-old Meg Murray's father goes missing. Meg Murray's father, played by Chris Pine. I love Chris Pine. Nick's celebrity crush? Yeah. Uh, goes missing after working on a government project, setting off Meg's fantastical journey through space and time. Uh, fantastical could also be replaced with nonsensical. Hmm. So, in you my don't opinion, like the book? It's fine. Okay. Uh, Ava... Ava DuVarnay is directing it. She did Selma. Okay. She directed Selma. Uh, so you have Reese Witherspoon, uh, Mindy Kaling, and Oprah Winfrey as the future president people in it. Hey, sorry, I made that. I can't remember joke. the. I can't remember the type of people. Okay. The the I don't ladies, know. the witch ladies. Okay. I can't remember. All right. Uh, all right. So Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda is being retitled uh, Love Simon. Uh, hmm. But it's becoming a book, and this is pretty quick because the book only just came out two years ago. It's a coming of age novel. I don't think that's a good name change. No, I think the original one is. Yeah, it's better. Much more yeah, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda is better. Yeah, than Love Simon. Yeah, uh, Simon hasn't come out yet, but he's forced to do so when a classmate finds out. Uh, so we got somebody from Thirteen Reasons Why. You got Nick Robinson from Everything Everything. Greg Berlenti. Who's he? I recognize that name. Uh, like the superhero shows, Greg Berlanti? Oh, all right. Well, he's directing this. Okay. So I guess that means Simon is just going to form a team of people who find out yeah. uh, he's secret. Yes, you're absolutely right. All right. So March 30th, Ready Player One by Ernst Klein. Oh, I've heard of that. Teenage Wade Watts gets sucked into a virtual universe. No, he doesn't get sucked into it. He just, he's you, in it. You haven't seen the movie. <laughs> uh, so you got uh, Ty Sheridan, who played Cyclops in X-Men Apocalypse. Okay. Olivia Cook, who plays Love Interest. Ben Mendelsohn, T.J. Miller, and Simon Pegg. Did you say T.J. Hooker? No, T.J. Miller. Oh, okay. So, and this is directed by Steven Spielberg. I think it looks good. So, all right. But I know what I'm about, world. Yeah. Uh, the House of Tomorrow. Are you familiar with this? No. By Peter Bognani. Nope. Uh, oh, hey, Asa Butterfield's in this. 
Oh. He's kind of disappeared since Ender's Game, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. And Nick Offerman. Nobody did good after Ender's Game. The coming of tale, coming of tale, coming of age tale? Probably, yeah. Follows two teen boys, one whom, who lives in a geodo, geodesic, geodesic dome. Yeah. Where he's been he... homeschooled by his eccentric grandmother. Huh. So this is just Splash from the Past starring Brad and Fraser. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll see that. Well, that could be fun. That sounds yeah. fun. You know what? I probably just watched Blast from the Past. Do you want to take the next one? Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. Yeah. Uh, the only thing about this that makes me want to see it. Oh, I thought that. No, I'm sorry. I thought that Julia Roberts was in this one, but she's in the adaptation of Maria Semple's other book. Oh. So this is Kate Blanchett is playing Bernadette. But it's which, Richard Linkletter. He does a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, De- it's a decent cast. Kristen Christian Wiig, Billy Crudup, Judy Greer. Yeah. All decent. You don't like Billy Crudup. He was in Justice League. He played Flash's father. Oh, yeah. He's Harry just Allen. got a dumb face. Anyway, we read this book for a book club, and it is fine. Okay. The book is, I feel like, kind of a mess. It's, it's one of those ones where... Um, the whole book is made up of correspondence and letters and things. There's no like Mm -hmm. narration really. And I just think it stretched the premise way too thin. So that kind of, I didn't really enjoy it. I'm only going to see this. If when reading the emails, they read everything out loud, like nobody does Hmm. in real life. Yeah. That's one of my least favorite things in movies. I hate people reading letters and emails out loud. Like anybody does that just sits there and reads a website. Well, I'm glad you took a hard line anyway, on that. So that comes out May 11th. So you're not excited for this? No. Nope. Okay. Judy Greer uh, has a weird career where she ends she up being works. in like she ends up being in like the most profitable movies. True. But not getting lead roles. Right. Like she was in Ant Man. She was in Jurassic World. I think she was in Inside Out. Yeah, she's all over the place. Yeah. Arrested Development. Well, yes. Okay. You want to take the next one too? Oh, sure. I don't have any connection to it, but yes, I will. I could... uh, Kevin Kwan's crazy rich asians what it's about new york-based nick brings his girlfriend rachel home for a wedding in singapore where she discovers he's vastly wealthy and that she may not fit into his world Uh uh-oh so uh starring fresh off the boats constant woo Mm. so and your pal ken jong from uh community community yes um you gonna go see it now you see everything ken jong is in (laughs) maybe i like constant woo and i like ken jong all right all right uh, what else on this list interests you? There's a couple of YA ones. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, three Seconds by, who is this? Andres Roland. Anybody in that? Roseman Pike. Clive oh. Owen. You're big into either of them? <laughs> <laughs> Roseman Pike was in yeah. Jack Reacher and Gone Girl. All right. So hey, here's she's another. She's no stranger for the page. Dom Hall Gleason's in a movie, man. Oh, boy. I know. Uh, the Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darkest Minds by Alexandra Beckin. That's the YA one, right? Um, now I'm a little confused about one that's down the way here a little bit. The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Lagerkrantz. Yes. So what I don't know is because this is this is based uh, or this is a continuation of the Millennium series, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo uh-huh. series. Uh-huh. So is this set in the same? Well, it's a s- who who did the original movies? Well, Ro- Rooney Mara was the. Elizabeth Salander in those, and Daniel Craig was in them. So, I mean, this is a sequel to that, but I don't know how they're connected. Uh, mm. I know that it looks like the cast isn't returning, but that could be a... Yeah. I don't know. Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer situation there. So, I don't know if they're in the same or not. That book did pretty well. I mean, even yeah. though it was uh, based on it. Do you have any feelings on any of these YAs that are being put uh, over? Okay, hold on. I gotta go ahead then. Uh, you mean the uh, Mortal Engines? Yeah, that one's uh, by Peter Jackson. He's doing that one. Oh, okay. Philip so, Reeve book. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a post-apocalyptic world. London has now become a giant machine that has to eat other cities to survive. I haven't watched the preview because I heard it looks really cool, so I figured I'd see it first on the big screen. Mm-hmm. Um, those are older books. We have them. Um, they've been in the stacks, but I might move them upstairs if that becomes. That's like a big thing. Yeah, it could be. So people we have, are hoping yeah, we have the, almost all of yeah. these. Uh, are you going to see First Man? It comes out October 12th. The Life of Neil Armstrong. I Maybe. Starring Ryan Gosling as Neil Armstrong. Really? Uh, That's funny. That's a funny choice. Very nice. And with La La Land director and Claire Foy, John Bernathal. So I don't know. What's his name? Ryan Gosling is kind of box office poison. Is he? he yeah, his movies just don't make money except huh. for La La Land. Interesting. Like nobody goes to a movie for Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. So certainly not me. Yeah. Are you gonna Ann Pratchett? Yeah, I haven't read Ann Pratchett. So El I Canto. Have, I don't have a big uh, connection to that. 
so what's the, yeah bel canto's the book and then the black hand the epic war between yeah, that's... a brilliant detective in the de- what is set in the summer of 1903 a detective investigates a crime outbreak that has ties to the beginnings of the mafia in america starring leonardo dicaprio starring and produced by is he going to be the detective or the criminal he'll be the detective don't okay. you think Maybe. 1903. He hasn't really done that. The uh, Guernsey <laughs> <laughs> Literary and Potato Peel Society right. uh, by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This has gotten a lot of um, good... I feel like it was never a big hit or anything, but I've right. heard a lot of people recommend this book. I know it's hmm. come up in the book club quite a few times as as an option here. So I was planning to read the book, so now I have now to you get have on to. it before yeah. this comes out. Ticking Following clock. the end of World War II, London writer Juliet Ashton is looking for inspiration for her next book when she becomes acquainted with a wild crew on Guernsey Island after receiving a letter. She becomes drawn into the world of the man who wrote to her and his friends under Nazi occupation. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It sounds interesting. Yeah. I do want to read that book. I'm pretty underwhelmed, I think, by this list. There's nothing on here that really like, yeah. stands out strongly to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I want to see The Death Cure just because I'm two movies in. Yeah. Uh, I want to see The Annihilation, the biological thriller. Right. Um, Wrinkle in Time, mm-hmm. I want to see. And I guess because I haven't read Ready Player One mm-hmm. and I haven't seen anything about it, I don't have like a huge. You haven't draw. even seen a single trailer? No. <gasps> we should do a uh, a, oh, a uh, Facebook Live yes. while you watch, <laughs> while I watch Ready watch Player One for the first time. And sure. Just, and then you can just turn to the camera and be like, like, okay. People would love that. That's I'd be fine. like, okay, now I've seen it. Sure, yeah, I'll check yeah. it out. I'll check it out. I don't know. Sometimes I'm super excited about the movies coming out, but nothing on here was really a yeah. tip Last top year you were list. so excited about like the four Tom Hank. Yeah, all the Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Books. <laughs> sure. Are any of these like what are these YA books? Do you think is going to be the best? The best. I don't have a lot of hope for the Death Cure. I imagine no. that's something that's going to bomb. Yeah. But at least the first in this case, like the first two movies made the money, and now you're just putting out there to like top things off. But I can't yeah. imagine it's going to do well. But I mean, with that is that now how, I, that's this series always confuses me because there are prequels as well. Yeah. Is this the last like this is the last book of the trilogy, and then it's prequels. It's so it's only prequels. So yeah. They don't have to make any more. Right. So this will end it. Yeah. It's and it's a... smart of them to not have split this one yeah, up in two. Seriously. Because there's no way they would have made it. Right. I, I imagine I, this I one really making... hope that the whole Divergent series cured people of wanting to split the last book into two. Because. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen it since. Yeah. So. But also they've kind of. The whole YA to movies. Yeah. Thing has kind of they've died sort down. Of mind it all. So. Um, I'm, I'm also interested in the Mortal Engines. Because like. YA. Because, like I said, why he's kind of it's died Phil- down. Philip Reeve book. But, yeah. But, I mean, it's Peter Jackson. So, yeah, it should nice be interesting to, to see him do something that's outside Middle Earth mm-hmm. for once. <laughs> it's so. been a while, right? What was the last thing? Since, well, he did Lovely Bones. So that oh, might be it. Oh, okay. And then All right. King Kong. Lovely Bones is a great adaptation. That's one of the few yeah. that I think the movie takes it. I think the movie's better. Yeah. Well, King Kong's great. I'll watch it. I think he made the definitive King Kong movie. Hmm. Interesting. So I'll check it out. But he keeps saying that it's a three-hour commitment, though. That's the problem. That is a problem. He had it. He needed three hours to make it definitive, though. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this will be his first. This will be the first one he's done since The Hobbit ended. Well, well. So he once stated that he didn't want to ever do superhero movies because he doesn't want to get sucked into the franchise machine. <laughs> and everybody's just like, "But what? Uh, <laughs> hold, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah." And then he just kind of stared at them. One right. one eye just, just slowly starting yeah. to veer to the yeah. left. <laughs> so all right, all right. That's it for the show. It is. Yeah, you're done right. with the show. You're, oh, this is your final. This is your swan song. No, I'm still. I'm staying. Oh, okay. All right. Just the the topic yeah. here. Well, we've got some things coming up here at the David A. Howe Public at Library. The library? On uh, Tuesday the twenty yeah. third. Yeah. Yes, Tuesday the twenty third yeah. at two o'clock. We're showing American Graffiti. George Lucas, Ron Howard, Harrison yeah. Ford, Magic of Yesteryear, yeah. and Richard Dreyfuss. A lot of Magic of Yesteryear's in there. Oh, yeah, I like that Dreyfuss. movie. That movie is a very, like, just sort of sit back and enjoy kind of movie. It's not yeah. super plot heavy. Or put on and do other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the whole thing is just, like, likable people driving around in cars listening to 50s music. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. Except for the very so. expensive Elvis music. Yeah. So. Yeah, they didn't they don't use any Elvis, do they? No, they couldn't afford it. Yeah. Well. So. Man knows what he's doing. Elvis? Yeah. You, th- you think so? No. <laughs> no, I think he was a victim of a larger machine. Yeah, the franchise machine. Yeah. <laughs> him, him and Peter Jackson. Yeah. A city uh, that eats other cities. That hmm. was the problem. Interesting, interesting. How do you think uh, he does we that? We also have on the, I don't know, on the 25th, 
We have uh-huh. Rachel Bell and Karen Axelrod coming back as Peregrine Road, a great piano accordion mm-hmm. concert, very mm-hmm. talented. Uh, and then in the afternoon, they're doing a, a special workshop. Uh, yes. Rachel Bell's leading a dulcimer workshop for kids. Dulcimer. So you can sign up at the youth desk. Is that where you guys have the? Yes, very soon. We just got all the information, so we'll be setting up all, all right. signups and posters. It'll Check be it out. Great. The book clubs are currently reading. Well, we we're, we're finishing up the uh, Walter Mosley book that I mentioned, yeah. The Long Fall, the but long that doesn't fall. meet until the first week of February, so you still have time. Yeah. And our first patron picks book club of the year is James Rollins' The Doomsday Key. Yeah. And Nikki, our friend Nikki, is also starting our. Uh, a Jane Austen book club with Shelley Dunn. Uh-huh. And the first one they're doing is Emma. So there's Darn a lot it. of lot of book club options. I was options. hoping it was Persuasion. That's the last one. Darn it. Yep. It's a three month thing. One one Jane Austen oh, okay. book each. I was month, kidding. So. What, so what is it? It's uh, It's Emma. I can't remember what the middle one is. Pride and no. Prejudice? Maybe. Northern Jir Abbey. And no, we already did Northern Jir Abbey. The last one is Persuasion. Pride and Prejudice. I don't know. Did what I already it say is. that one? It could be it's probably Pride and Who's Prejudice. Who's the uh, if I'm being honest? No, I was thinking Emma. Okay. Emma's the first one. <laughs> Wait, sense of sensibility. <laughs> It might be. Is that her? Please stop asking me these okay. questions. Uh, what about you? Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. What's new? Pussy Coming cat. up. Oh. For you. Uh, not too much. We, we're, we've we got some stuff uh, coming for like February and March. Mm-hmm. So January is still kind of... The next movie we're showing on the second is the My Little Pony movie oh. based off of the Friendship is Magic cartoon. Okay. We're not showing the 80s My Little Pony movie right. where like the lava creatures and the ice creatures are at war and wow. we find out that they can be friends. Can we do that? Show that one? Yeah. It's pretty trippy. Oh. Um, I used to watch it a lot. Okay. Uh, Because I didn't have hang-ups. Yeah. Uh, What else are we doing? You tell me. We got Anime Club Uh every uh, Wednesday night at 5.30. We're watching Your Name. My name? No, Your Name. Your Name. You. The movie Your Name. Okay. Uh, We're watching that at 5.30. Um, We got an anti-Valentine's Day party coming up in February. That's fun. That's probably going to be the 13th. It's the day before Valentine's Day. Ah, I like it. Because, I like that twist. Yeah. That's nice. It has nothing to do with the fact that Anime Club is on the 14th, mm. and I'm not running two, I'm not running four hours of teen programs on Valentine's Day. I want Day. you to think about how you could have gotten away with me thinking that that was a clever thing to do. It still is clever. Okay. It's very clever. All right. I don't know what to show, though. Last year, we watched Labyrinth. That's fun. Because she's like, I don't want to love you, David Bowie. Show the Dark Crystal. It literally has <laughs> nothing to do with anything. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said that, too, and I'm like, That's, they're not even peop- there's no people in it. I'm, they're I'm all in. they're all Muppets. I'll be there. puppets. Can I come? If if you're not a Muppet, but you're a Jim Henson Pup. puppet, are you still a Muppet? Mm. Like yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a fine line. It's yeah. a fine line between Muppet and puppet. Would you count? So the like the Ghost of Christmas Past, even though she's like a porcelain doll in Muppet Christmas Carol, is yeah. she still a Muppet? That's a tough call. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go with yes. Because she's in a Muppet movie. Yeah, because she's in a okay. Muppet movie. But, yeah. but Dark Crystal, those aren't Muppets. But it's Jim Henson's company. Right. I don't know. Are are the characters, are, are the puppets on Sesame Street Muppets? Is Big Bird a Muppet? Yeah, they are considered Muppets. Really? Yeah. I've never considered Big Bird a Muppet. Well, I don't really either, but you always see like Jim Henson's Muppets in Sesame Street. Oh, know, all right. Unlike books and stuff. I mean, I've always liked Telly. It's nice to know he's a Muppet now. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's part of the fold. Yeah. yeah, but they're in their own like sub group of Muppets. They're monsters. I Everybody always makes true. a point to make sure that we know Elmo's a monster, Elmo a monster. Telly's a monster, yep. and Kermit's the one who walks between worlds. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yes, he's a night walker. Yeah, he's, he sure is. He sure is. And on that note, <laughs> we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.